Everybody knows that you can make a FaceTime call on your Mac when it's connected to your iPhone but did you know that you can use your iPhone as a webcam for your MacBook and you don't even need Apple's special stand. I just use my pop socket or you can just place it against a box or anything. And if you have both an iPhone and a Mac, I'm about to show you 12 really cool tips that will allow you to really take advantage of the Apple ecosystem. Let's say for example, I have a folder here that I use to store all the media that I need for the project. And let's say I have a photo on my iPhone that I'm gonna use as a thumbnail for this video. Can you guess what the fastest way to transfer it from the photos app straight to the folder well it might be surprising but it's not airdrop or anything like that you can actually just copy the photo on your iPhone and paste it straight into that folder and I'm sure like a lot of people know that you can copy text from a device to another but that's not just applicable for text you can copy images videos documents and anything else really since the day I bought my first Apple product in 2020 I spent nearly every day for four years researching and discovering every single thing you can do with these devices and in my experience taking advantage of these hidden features will make you as productive efficient and competent as humanly possible the second tip is something I'm using right now and I don't see it online that often which is the ability to screen mirror your iPhone into your Mac but first you have to go to airplay settings and allow airplay for everyone and this is really cool because sometimes I use it when I'm taking pictures of somebody so that they can see themselves before I take the picture if they like it or not and that saves a lot of time and this gets even better because in iOS 18 I think yeah 18 you can fully control your iPhone iPhone from your Mac and use the pointer as your finger or something like this and your iPhone can be in your pocket or in a bag so you don't even need to have your iPhone which is very convenient but you'll have to wait until September. Most of the tips that will be mentioned in this video will help in sort of merging the two devices in a way that makes them feel like one device but there are some other tips which are subjectively my favorite which will allow you to really separate the two and make you able to focus on one device and not get distracted by the other and I'm gonna explain why and how in a second. The third trick is a very clever one that will allow you to merge all of your devices into one magical and futuristic device that can sort of change shapes and forms. It's called handoff and for example let's say I receive a long email on my iPhone and I'll be like I actually need to do a lot of typing so it's better done on my Mac. I can literally within like less than a second click on the window on the dock that has this little iPhone icon at the top and it will literally pick up where you left on your iPhone so it's like this seamless experience that can transform from a device to another and it doesn't only work on Safari or email and I know these tips are supposed to be iPhone and Mac only but this fourth one felt too good not to share which is about AirPods and if you have AirPods the experience you will have with them alongside the iPhone and the Mac is just exquisite because the airpods don't just connect to one device and you'll have to manually reconnect it to the other device if you want to switch they'll actually just switch simultaneously without you having to do anything and it just makes your life a lot easier like you're watching a video on your mac and you get a call you can just instantly answer it and you will have the call on your airpods so like you don't have to do anything it's just so seamless the fifth one is not a very obvious one and it's sort of hidden but you know if you have like a really large video and you want to transfer it between your iPhone and your Mac you can sort of use the cable but it's slow if you have the lightning cable and you can only use the fast USB-C cable if you have the iPhone 15 Pro which let's not lie we don't all have that the fastest way is not actually airdrop the fastest way is by using iCloud so if you export your video into iCloud and then access it from your iPhone that's actually the fastest way to transfer very large files although an iPad is probably ideal for this sixth tip but if you have a document on your Mac that you want to sign or annotate you can just click the icon here and annotate it using your iPhone and this is also the case in your notes app you can use your iPhone iPhone or your iPad to insert documents, photos, or even beautiful sketches like this one. Tip number seven is that 
we all know that you can access the photos app on your mac but what i found out a couple days ago is that you know when you're trying to upload something to the web you can actually see your photos in that photos tab and then you can use it to upload photos or videos which is a lot more convenient than having to download it from the photos app and then go to your downloads folder and then you, you go on and here are the final five golden tips that are personally my favorite because they allow me to really focus and get a lot done without being distracted by my phone and this might seem unnecessary but trust me if you get like an important call or a message and then you try to reply to it by the time you reply to it you are distracted by your phone you see the notifications you go to instagram and you're suddenly scrolling through thousands and thousands of reels somehow so on the mac if you press right click on any number in the screen you can call it straight from your mac without needing your iphone you're out somewhere and you don't have access to wi-fi no problem you can access your iphone hotspot straight from your mac without having to enable it manually from your iphone you hate texting on your mac because you can't use emoji well if you press Control, command and space you can access the same emoji keyboard that is present on your iphone and speaking of messaging i highly suggest enabling messages on your mac and installing the whatsapp and telegram apps if you use that and if you want any of the focus modes enabled you can enable them straight from your mac and that way you can mute that annoying group chat without actually having to do it in your iphone and if any of these five tips don't work you might have a problem in one of the settings so i highly recommend watching magvin's video Video. he goes through all the settings and this video was inspired by him anyway so this is the least that i can do to give him some credit and i'm aware that there'll probably be a lot more so please let me know if i missed any in the comments down below